Good evening, and yes, that it is actually evening. Um, welcome to the last final episode of Red True Diaries. It's like 90, I think it's 91 or 92. <laughs> Still haven't kept track. Um, yeah, so, all right, first things first. I'm going, I'm a, I'm a little bit paranoid because, all right, today is Saturday, March 14th. 2016 and uh, my mom just texted me yesterday that there is a black bear loose here in the Wissahickon woods and I'm actually not far from one of the, the sightings the main sighting and I just remember this when I got here I'm not too deep in the woods fortunately and I am near a residential area and I did just see a runner go by and I asked if the bear was captured and apparently not no news yet and uh, he hasn't seen any <laughs> longest run so hopefully this right here right now is the most excitement that will go on for the remainder so he comes back to me so I'm sorry say again no no not me definitely fresh it's still lights yeah no no I haven't gone much further than here so. Understandable, yeah, and it's getting dark, so. Well, that, that doesn't matter. Your eyes are well. True, true. So, and because it is Saturday, and you as well, thank you. <laughs> you don't see too many people um, on a Saturday night out here anyway, but I will say, I do feel a little bit. Uh, of a relief seeing one other person out here um, hopefully if they end up seeing the bear they'll be will scream bear but anyway um, yeah sunset and let me see can I get pos all right it makes me a little bit darker it might adjust too but I have my phone but it just looks so beautiful I have my phone positioned against a fence because that way is someone's property and they have this convenient fence for me to be able to, to prop my phone against while the sun sets back there voila but all right Oh, the power of technology to go ahead and readdress so that there's enough lighting to see me as I speak. Okay, without further ado, and while I still have some light and there is no bear chasing me, um, and that's such the quintessential fight or flight uh, response scenario. There's a bear chasing you, and that's the flight response. Um, here, let me go ahead. All right, so let there be light don't want to say goodbye as much as I'm looking forward to you know not thinking of the different episodes that I'm what I'm going to say for my different episodes and what I'm going to feature uh, there is something a bit sad this is yet another thing coming to an end for me these days one being my first two years back at school finishing many prereqs for my core program um, which so far I have decided is occupational therapy and yeah all my prereqs are met as far as I know um, I'm actually you know still debating some things with that but anyway that just ended Tuesday my final is done it's been an intense four months I didn't do as well as I would, as I would have liked but I passed and I did get some good grades and learned a lot along the way so I'm satisfied um, but yeah, so with that though, it's, again, it still comes a little bit of sadness. I do love learning, but I do love my free time. Everything has its advantages and disadvantages. And, oh, we might get some rain. There is a, an impending rainstorm too, <laughs> but I have an umbrella, so it's all good. Um, all right. And uh, speaking of another cycle, I just got my period yesterday too. And that's that was the ending just of this past month and it always builds to this crescendo and it's always a somewhat of a relief when it finally comes because it's like a reset button and then you know with the ending of this year 
of doing these episodes. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot, and honestly, there have been some transitions with uh, friendships lately. Um, one is actually rekindled, and another, I feel, that is pretty much ending. At least, I feel like the best of times have ended between a friend and I, and and another one whom I will be visiting next week. Um, to be quite frank, he is dying of prostate cancer, and that is a lot for me because I've already been with a friend who has died of cancer, um, and she was very young, only 25 years old. And this friend is about 60 years old, but is not ready to let go as soon as he feels he has to. So. I'm going to spend a week with him in California to just spend some time and be there however I can during this transitory time and uh yeah talk about those cycles which a lot of the show is about and has been about the cycles beginning middle and and looking at it more cyclically versus linearly it really helps a lot actually uh, it's funny to think about yet yeah, say another transition that has been a big part of my life this past year and something that you know a lot of these things I'm giving you personal accounts of things that I feel like are core metaphors that can be applied in any scenario when you look at it symbolically or as an archetype so you know thus that you know beginning, middle, and end, like orgasms. You know, you have the start, the stimulation, you have the peak, the climax, and then, you know, you have the aftermath where you're, you're just enjoying and chilling, and then you just have that, you know, state where nothing is going on, and then it all starts over again. And uh, so this past year, when I think about, you know, when I started this, and how in love I was with, um, this guy named Max and how I dated a couple of people surprisingly between him and the man that I'm currently in love with and how how much they both the one the one I was dating at this time last year or in love with actually we weren't dating this time last year but I was in love with him still very much and then the person that I'm in love with now they uh some of the strongest loves of my life but this one is I have met my match in so many ways and it's he it has been amazing and one of the greatest things is how much I'm learning how much we are learning individually and together and growing and all that that entails how much you know, it, it, he uh, already lives a lot of the same ways or the, the same uh, it's funny we're so different but the, we it's similar in the sense of how intuitive we both are and that's rare we both recognize that in, in each other and having like he mirrors to me a, ways about me that I've I I know and I've seen but to have them reflect it through him especially a man has never happened to me before um, it's, it's just it throws me off a bit at times <laughs> and it's so beautiful it's so amazing that's why I say he's such a, a match he's such a an incredible fit for me he is so the yang to my yin and vice versa like but also the yin to my yang like i'm very masculine and feminine and and so is he and yeah oh it's whew, okay but all right <laughs> that being said um i just feel in certain ways I've, become, I've come full circle but say the circle hasn't closed it's been more like a spiral you know where you start here and you come around to revisit that same point like that and then but you realize you've grown and that you've expanded and um, i feel these days that i'm expanding exponentially that's just been fantastic 
absolutely fantastic. And uh, and it's not always easy, let me tell you, not easy at all. Like Brene Brown talks about in her lecture, The Power of Vulnerability, it's like getting my ass kicked in this fucking arena, let me tell you. Just making sure no bear is about to kick my ass. So, uh, <laughs> but it's worth it. I always say it. it's so worth it. And um, one of the things lately when I was getting my ass kicked just last week by such an intense week, uh, man, whew, with Mother's Day too. No, that was, that's the one thing I wanted to leave on and really wanted to focus on that I've been thinking about all week with the show is my acronym is MOM, M-O-M. And especially with Mother's Day coming to a head and us mothering ourselves, men and women, but especially women. You know, and the acronym stands for, oh, I'm trying to make sure that it's state. Okay. It seems like it keeps tilting. Okay. Let's go. All right. Mom. Meditation, orgasms, and music. For me, when things get, and I've said this before, I know I've said this in a show before and I highlighted meditation and orgasms and music, but now I'm just gonna say bringing it all together, bringing it back to the center, but uh, the heart, sorry. Mm. Um, when I started meditating again about a month ago, and truthfully, I haven't meditated in about a week or so, maybe less. I did, you know what, I did sometime last week, but I was doing it every day there for a little while as soon as I woke up, and that's when I wanna get back into it again. But um, as my final came closer, it would've been good for me to meditate. Sorry, I just thought it was like, it's getting foggy. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up, but meditation is really there's nothing like just doing it five minutes sit your butt down there's a video i recorded back in i think july that gives a four full breath meditation that's just fantastic <sighs> i just had like 20 orgasms yesterday and that oxytocin release is so good look up google oxytocin you can see the tremendous benefits of it it's funny when learning about it in school with hormones is often linked with the main thing is for contractions during labor or let down during um, nursing and breastfeeding, but really it's actually great for pain relief. We're gonna recap some of the things. Okay, oxytocin, that's released during orgasm, and for men, it's only released when they're in love, which is funny, just found out that fact. Only released for men when they're in love, and with women it's released every time we have an orgasm. But the release of oxytocin, when and it is released in other times, but it's the most during orgasm and during childbirth. How funny is that? But it, it increases your pain tolerance. It can take pain away altogether, which for me, or maybe that's what it is, is in such an increase in tolerance that when I have really bad cramps, that's what it was yesterday. I had like 20 orgasms. I had like two rounds of like, I don't know, several um, to you know eradicate them naturally. And uh, it's also, it, it counteracts the cortisol, the stress hormone, so that you know you feel just more at peace. And what are the other benefits? Oh, I can't think of them right now. I mean, they just, it, it feels fantastic. Um, but Google it, you'll find out. And music, music is just, I mean, of all the different types, so many kinds, whether it be you making it, listening, even if it's just the music of the spheres of nature. Those three things, mom, meditation, orgasms, and music, can transform your whole world. It has for me multiple times, countless times actually, especially when things are chaotic and for the most part, um, it's free. You don't have to pay anyone. It's just simply a matter of making the time. So instead of looking for someone else to take care of you, take care of yourself. Mother yourself. Love. Be your lover. Love yourself. And you'll have that much more to share with others, to be mothering, to be loving. But it's really important to start and end with yourself because it, when 
you know, one of the most important things to me is that when it is my time to go, and hopefully it's not within the next couple minutes, but if when it is, because it will be at some point, and it is my time to go here tonight and with this show, but that I can let go without fighting, without struggle, or as little struggle as possible. Leave on the, the note, on, on this quote, well, right, yeah, this is a great quote I read recently about um, Henry David Thoreau, written about by uh, Waldorf, Waldo, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Um, I have a book of his of essays and short stories and poems and such, and he was writing about Henry David Thoreau, who spent two years, two months, and two days living living out on Walden Pond by himself. And um, anyway, he died at 44 years um, old of, uh, he had TB, he contracted TB as a teenager, and he got severe bronchitis, and it lasted for a few years, and he ended up dying of that, but from complications due to his TB. And when one of his aunts asked if he had made peace with God, he said, I never knew that we quarreled. I was like, yeah. Have you made peace? Are you quarreling? If so, maybe find you know, some middle ground. Call it a truce. We never know. This is within the past, you know, since the last time I recorded, Prince suddenly died in an elevator. And I like to think and hope that he did. I know he was a very spiritual person that, you know, that he was at peace. And that's one of the greatest gifts that any of us, any of us can have and can give to ourselves at any moment, any day, right here, right now. Now I'm like, hey, don't cue the bear. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so God and I are certainly not quarreling right now. And yeah, right now. <laughs> I definitely have had my issues.